everybody, welcome back to a new video. Now, I've gotten a lot of requests lately to show you guys how you can modify your 12 volt compressor fridge power cable. Now, we all know that these come with these horrible 12 volt plugs. They get voltage drop on them. They never stay plugged into your power station or power source. And they always are falling out and basically cutting power to your fridge. Now, I have a simple solution to this. Basically what we're gonna do is modify this cable and put a 5521 barrel connection on the end because most power stations actually have 5521 barrel connections on them. So what we're gonna do is tear down this cable, show you guys how to modify it. And then right after that, I'll show you some of the other custom cables I've made so you guys can see all the other options that are available and maybe give you guys some ideas. So hopefully you guys are excited. Let's go ahead and jump into modifying this cable. Now I chose two different options for this modification. One's gonna be a little bit more work. That's this longer pigtail here that has exposed wires. And the other option is just picking up some of these, uh, they're basically just 55, 21 barrel connections that have a positive and negative insert that you screw down. So this is gonna be faster and easier, but uh, this option over here is gonna be longer lasting and more durable. So I always wanna show you guys two different options. I picked these both up on Amazon. Their links are down in the video description. Let's go ahead and start the modification. Now the first step in modifying this cable is finding out which one is the positive and negative wire because they're both black and it's sometimes hard to tell. So what we want to do is disassemble this connector. So what you want to do is twist the end and then it pulls off. And then there is a screw here and you basically just unscrew this, pull the screw out and then this should come off and snap apart. So then you can see that the center connection here is going to this wire and the outside is going to the other. So if we look here, the center post is the one with all the writing on it and the negative is the one that has ridges on it. Now, it's kind of hard for you guys to see that in the video, but one of the wires has ridges on it and you can feel it's kind of bumpy and then the other one is completely smooth and has lettering on it. So the ridge wire is our negative wire. Now that we've determined the polarity of the wires, what we want to do is uh, basically trim off this end. So you take these wire strippers and just cut it off. And uh, we'll basically just kind of tear these apart. You might have to get a knife. Usually it's these, okay, there you go. So you can tear them a little bit apart. Okay, so now that we've cut off the end, there's no going back. We are definitely committed. So now what we want to do is take the wire strippers and basically take about a quarter inch off of the outside insulation. So this is 16 gauge wire, so I'm gonna put it in the 16 gauge and we're just gonna strip it back like that. It's really easy. And then the next thing you, you can do is just twist these up so they don't become all unraveled. Okay, then you have your main positive and main negative. And on the other hand, you have where it plugs into the fridge. So let's get the 5521 connection on here. Okay, so you're gonna need a really small screwdriver to screw these out. Now, I always use this toolkit for all my you know, small needs, and uh, I'll include this in the video description. This is an excellent small toolkit. And uh, so basically, you just unscrewed both of these here. And remember, we have the ridge side is the negative and the wording side is the positive. So we basically just look at this. Okay, so positive goes in this side and negative goes in this side. Basically just get it in there as far as you can. A quarter inch was pretty decent there. And we're gonna tighten this down so that uh, you can see there's no wires exposed. So let's go ahead and tighten that down. Okay, so there we have it. Everything is connected up. Um, it seems actually it's pretty durable. Um, what you might wanna do is put some heat shrink on this and then uh, slide it up to both those there and then basically shrink it down uh, to get rid of these exposed wires here and so there's no chance of them arcing together. But this is just temporary. Let's go ahead and plug this in and see if it powers the fridge. Okay, so we have our custom cable here. One side's plugged into the fridge. Then we have our end that we just made up that we're gonna plug into the FF Power CN505 on one of the 5521 barrel connections. Now this fridge takes a second to turn on, so let me go ahead and jump to when the compressor actually turns on. Okay, so it's running off the 5521 port, pulling 33 watts. Okay, so this seemed to work just fine on eco mode. Now I tried to put the fridge on max mode to see what would happen, and you can see the DC output actually got shut off. And that's because we went over the four amp limit on the 5521 barrel connections 
on this power station. Now this power station is just a little bit different because it actually separates the 12 volt socket and the 5521. You can pull 10 amps through this and four amps through these, but most power stations have them all tied together at a 10 amp limit. So you probably won't see this issue on other power stations. Now, if you have the FF Power CN505 or the Bybean or Alcatel, just set it to eco mode and it'll run just fine through the 5521. Now here's an example of a power station that can run a fridge on max mode because the 5521 is all tied in with the 10 amp output. This is the Blue Eddy EB3A. See, we're pulling 61 watts here and the DC output has not shut off and the fridge is on max mode. Now, most of the time I recommend you run your fridge on eco mode to save power and you'll rarely ever need to run it on max mode. But this demo here just shows you a power station that has a 10 amp limit and shows that you have the ability to run it on a max mode if you needed. And if you have a power station that limits the DC output to a lesser amount, you'll wanna make sure your fridge is set on eco mode. Okay, so if you're looking to build something a little bit more durable and longer lasting than the other option, this is option number two. So we have this 5521 pigtail with the exposed wires. And the best way to connect this would be a solder connection. So we have our fridge cable here. Remember the positive wire has the lettering on it and the negative wire has the ridges. Okay, so I've zoomed in for the next step here. So I put the heat shrink on my positive and negative wires and just make sure it's backed off so that it doesn't melt. You want a good solid inch between there. And then I've stripped back the wire on the pigtail so it matches the same length here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-tin all four of these connections and then solder them together. Then we're gonna grab the heat shrink, slide it down and melt it over. So let me go ahead and show you a video of me doing that entire process. Okay, so we have the solder completed up, two butt joints here. Now we wanna slide down the heat shrink, melt that, and then I'll probably reinforce it with some Tessa tape. Okay, so this is Tessa tape. It's like an upgrade to electrical tape. It's like a fabric electrical tape. And once I've discovered this stuff, it's amazing. And uh, now that we have the heat shrink tightened down there, I'm just gonna wrap this whole thing to reinforce it in Tessa tape and it'll give it some extra strength. Okay, so I have everything wrapped up here. And it definitely makes it more rigid and uh, less vulnerable to, you know, being pulled apart or damaged. So there we go. We have our cable completed. Now, many of you may not have experience with soldering or it may seem a little daunting because you've never done it before. But I'll tell you, this is going to be a higher quality cable. And it's not that expensive and it's not that hard to learn. Now, some of the tools that I used here were a basic pair of wire strippers. This is Tessa tape. You could also use electrical tape. You have your heat shrink and a lighter to melt that. Back here is a helping hands tool that helps you hold the wires. Then I have my solder here, it's a 60-40 mix, and then my soldering iron. So not that much, they sell kits on Amazon. I definitely recommend you guys learn how to do this so you can make your own cables and repair things if needed. Okay, so here's a demo of me plugging in the new cable into the FF Power 5521 slot. You see it's on eco mode, pulling 35 watts, and Look at that, we don't have to use a 12 volt cigarette plug anymore. We got a 5521 power cable. Okay, so there are two different tutorials on how to modify your fridge cable so that you can use a 5521 barrel connection. Now I wanted to do that one because it's probably the most common connection that you get on a power station. Now there are a ton of other options, especially if you're doing a DIY setup. For example, here I have my DIY 50 amp hour power station and I used Anderson power pole connections on the front. You could also use SAE. There's just a lot of different options. Now, what I wanted to do in the rest of the video is just show you guys some of the cables and adapters that I've made and how they work and how useful they are, especially if you find out how to make your own custom cables. You can save a ton of money instead of buying custom cables online. All you have to do is have either a crimper for Anderson power pole or learn how to solder. So let me go ahead and briefly show you guys some of the connections and I think you guys will find it helpful. Okay, so this is the fridge power cable that I would use anytime I go camping. I have a few of them that I've made, 
Basically, it's an eight foot power cable that uses 12 gauge wire. This is 12 to landscape cable you can pick up at Lowe's or Home Depot. And on one end, I basically cut off and sacrificed the end of a fridge power cable and soldered it in line. And then on the other end, I put Anderson power pole connections and I'll show you the benefits of that later. Now I have a full video on how to crimp and set up Anderson power pole connections. I'll throw that down in the video description if you're interested. But the main benefit to this is you can have one really nice power cable and then a ton of adapters that you can hook onto it to connect to what you want. Okay, so I picked out some of the most common adapters that I use or that I would use to power a fridge if I had to. So I have the power cable here with Anderson power pole and then all these adapters have Anderson on one side and then another connection on the other. So I have two different 12 volt cigarette plugs. This is actually a really nice one because the spring isn't that strong and it doesn't pop out that easy. And then I have this one that can handle 30 amps that uh, came with one of my inverters. So I could go from Anderson to 12 volt. And then I have this uh, 5521 cable that I made a long time ago. So it could be a 5521 connection. And then also if you had a power station with XT60 output, you could plug it right in there. Like the FF Power P2001 has an XT60 connection and I used this last time when I was camping. So this one worked really well. If I wanted to hook up directly to someone's battery, I could also use uh, these alligator clamps and Anderson on one end. So basically, like I said, one cable and a lot of adapters versus carrying around five different cables. Okay guys, the last demo that I wanna show you guys is basically how you can make a custom uh, extension cable for a solar panel. So in the middle here, I have 10 feet of this 12-2 landscape cable that I've already shown you. Now this could be a 15 foot, this could be 20 foot, 25 foot. This is 12 gauge, so you don't get much voltage drop on it. That's nice. And say you wanna hook this up to a power station to charge it via a solar panel. So I have my MC4 connections on one end with Anderson power pole, so I plug that in right there. And then 15 feet down the line, I can connect this to a power station. Well, multiple power stations have different connections. So I have the Anderson power pole to XT60 to charge EcoFlow products. I have Anderson to a 5521 so I can charge the smaller power stations that use 5521. And then I have Anderson to an eight millimeter connection charge like the Blue Eddy products and things like that. So you can get a brief idea of the benefit of having a custom cable like this because you have so many options. Okay, so we basically come to the end of the video. Hopefully you found this information helpful on making a custom cable for your fridge or even coming up with some sort of custom cable setup using Anderson Power Pole. Now, whenever I go on a camping trip, I always bring this little tote here with all these adapters in it so that I'm prepared if any situation comes up because I've been on multiple camping trips and someone brought something they wanna plug in and I didn't have the proper adapter. So every time that happened, I made a new adapter. So now I feel like I almost have all the adapters I need. Um, I do have some other SAE ones in here that I didn't mention, but anyway, I hope you guys liked the content. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. I'd love to hear your guys' setup. Let me know what you guys use cable-wise. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.